Hello YouTube, this is Frono. I discovered a new way to do item filters without redstone torches in Minecraft, using the new copper bulbs. They have the same properties as the standard impulse filters, they are one wide tileable, silent and overflow protected. There's also a variation that can pick up almost a full stack of items, for example from a water stream. And it isn't even expensive. The only disadvantage is that they are a bit slow to react. It takes something like 14 game ticks until the signal changes, but this is typically not a big problem for these filters. I haven't seen them anywhere else and designed them myself, but of course someone else might have invented it already, so if you've seen a similar design, please leave a comment and I'll give the other creator or creators credit in the description. So why do we need such filters, since we have the good old impulse filter? Well, simply sometimes you have to piece together a redstone contraption for example, here I designed a storage system that has three levels and it's often hard to fit the redstone because in this case, for example, this redstone torch would activate this redstone if it was too low. And often you will run into problems with quasi-connectivity, like here. I built this shulker box loaded to high and if this block is powered, this would quasi-power this piston, so if it gets updated it would break the shulker box. So it's just good to have alternative filters. One that is quite common and avoids a few of these problems is this one here. Essentially you need to invert the signal at this piece of redstone dust here. If that redstone dust is powered, then you must unlock this hopper, so this block cannot be powered. You can also do this by using a sticky piston in a redstone block, but this design is noisy because of the piston. And I'm not sure that it's unload proof. I'm also not sure if there's an alternative design that can pick up more items. You see the standard impulse filter can pick up 23 items to get to 64. But especially if we bring in items using water streams like so, it helps to be able to collect more items. And there exists the signal strength independent design, which in the wiki for example is called the hybrid design. And this one is AB tileable. That means that two adjacent slices are different but we can repeat them in alternating patterns. So if this is slice A and this one is slice B, then you can repeat A, B, A, B, A, B, and so on. And each slice can pick up 63 items if you put in 23 of the renamed blocker items. Don't try this with this filter. This will break the overflow protection. But these filters are just a bit more effort to build and so they can pick up the full stack. But I don't think we can do this for this filter. And this is the point where we get to the new design. So this filter here is silent and it does allow to build a shulker box loader immediately below the filter, like so, in a one way tileable way. And there's a variant that can pick up 62 items. So you would put in 20 renamed blocker items and not 21 for reasons that we'll get into. In case you're wondering, I'm using gold blocks for blocks that have to be solid, so they have to transmit a redstone signal. For example, this copper bulb is wrapped through this block. And I use glass blocks if the blocks can or should be transparent. So you could use, for example, slabs or glass or sea lanterns there. So this is editing Fruno. What I forgot to mention was that copper bulbs emit different light levels depending on their oxidization state. A fully oxidized copper bulb will give a light level of 4, while just a waxed copper bulb will give a light level of 15. In this case, you would get quite a lot of light updates if you use waxed copper bulbs. So if you use this filter, you probably want to de-wax them and let them oxidize so that the changes in the light level do not cause a performance issue. What you can also do is use lighting blocks as part of your build. For example, here you can replace these solid blocks with frog lights or jack-o'-lanterns and this will completely avoid any lag from the lighting updates. But for the purposes of this video, I will stick with the waxed versions because it's simply much better to see if they are lit or not. The oxidized ones are a bit harder to spot. I've created a few sample setups in the world download. So in creative, you could just do a copy of this dropper here containing all of the items that we want to sort and have the item put into a water stream. Very much as the impulse filters, these hoppers give a signal strength of two or three and depending on that, that redstone dust will be powered. And then also this repeater will be powered. And we have an observer read the repeater and update the status of the copper bulb. And if the copper bulb is on, then it means that this hopper is locked. So signal strength goes up, repeater turns on, 
turns off the redstone bulb, hopper is unlocked, items go through, signal strength goes down again, observer reacts again, copper bulb turns on. That's the cycle. It takes seven redstone ticks for the signal to arrive here. We have these two comparators for two ticks, we have a three tick repeater for three more ticks and we have the observer and the copper bulb. So two items might get through. So unlike the normal impulse filter who is a bit faster, you will have an, one additional item go through, but that's not a problem. So why do we need a three tick repeater here? That might not be obvious. And in fact, the very first design that I tried was that one here. We pre-fill this with 41 items. And so the signal strength here will be either one or two. These are the only states that can happen. And if the signal jumps to two, we will turn off the copper bulb. And if it goes back to one, we will turn it on. But unfortunately, this doesn't work. So let's say we have a few items in here. And let's freeze the game. Once the last item goes through, and now the redstone signal will update in a moment. But now if new items come in, like so, The redstone signal updates immediately again, but this observer will only get one pulse. And consequently, this observer will only get, also only get one pulse. And now the copper bulb is in the wrong state. So we have 64 items in, the item should go through, but the system remains locked. And if we unfreeze the game, you see that it stays that way. So this one is broken. And the reason for that is simply that the observer is pretty much in cooldown, if you like. So this observer will read a signal and output a signal two ticks later for two ticks. And during those two ticks, the observer cannot get a new signal. So for example, if you have a two tick repeater and you give it a short pulse like this, you will toggle the redstone lamp, even though the repeater changes states twice. So the repeater is on and off, but the lamp changes only once. This will be fine if you put this to three ticks, and now this, those two are synchronized. Whenever the repeater goes on, the redstone lamp goes on, and the other way around. So that's the behavior that we want. So that's what happens here. We have these two synchronized, although in this kind of an opposing ways. So whenever this repeater will turn on, this redstone bulb will turn off. This design might still work in very special circumstances, essentially where you know that you have long pauses between items. But in general, this will get caught in an invalid state and be broken. This design is one by tileable. Because of the redstone wiring is the same as the impulse filter. It's also overflow protected because a signal will never bleed over to adjacent slices, so the worst you can get here is a signal strength 3. This hopper here is completely full, but this won't change the adjacent slices. And it isn't even that expensive, I mean it uses a copper bulb, but apart from that, just two comparators, one observer, one repeater, and a bit of dust. That's not much more than the usual impulse filter. And even better, there's an AB tileable version that costs almost the same, but is two blocks higher, unfortunately. Uh, we need to insulate the redstone dust. So if we have a high signal here, for example, if this one is completely full, we must make sure that this signal does not bleed over to the adjacent slices. And of course, we must take care to not power the copper bulbs from the adjacent slices. So here are the two slices. As the signal strength independent version, we only use redstone signal strength two. So we have two pieces of redstone dust and the filter, if it's blocked, will have signal strength one. But if we add any items, we get signal strength two. And these slices are just organized in a way that the redstone can never bleed over. Of course, we must put a solid block here in order to prevent the redstone dust from connecting. But this is now insulated, that's fine. And we put in 20 filler items and not 21 because, again, if the items go through, there's always one extra item coming through. So we will go down, in this case, to 21 items, not to 22, even if 22 has already signal strength 1. And let's also have a look at the resource requirements. So for the standard filter, one white tileable overflow protected, but 23 item capacity, we need one repeater, one comparator, 
one torch and three dust, which comes out at 10 redstone per slice, if redstone is the limiting factor. Now for the hybrid design, you need a bit more. You need for two slices for A and B, you need two repeaters, three comparators. It's still not a lot, 11.5 redstone per slice. But this design here is a bit more expensive. For one slice, we need two repeaters. We need one comparator, one redstone block, three dust and one piston. This comes out at 22 redstone, again for 23 items capacity. If we look at the copper barb version, again, overflow protected, one by tileable, 23 items capacity. Then we need two comparators, three dust, one repeater, one observer and one copper bulb. And this comes out at 14.25 redstone because, because four copper bulbs need one redstone. And if we look at the AB tileable design, it's hardly more expensive. We need one node block here, but otherwise it's just a few more building blocks. So with 62 items capacity, we come out at 14.75 redstone per slice. Now after building, you have to bring the redstone torches in the correct state because you might accidentally update your observers a couple of times. What you can do while building is basically you use levers or perhaps redstone blocks to lock these hoppers. So you could do this as well. And then you just build it. These hoppers will be locked. Once you're done, you bring all in the same state. So for example, you have the four blocker items and one filter item, so signal strength one. And in this case, all of the lamps have to be turned on and then just remove the levers or the temporary blocks. And after a while, the system should look like this, with all of the redstone lamps on and all of the lower hoppers locked. In the world download, there's also a variant when you have an ice transport on the other side between the filter and the hoppers, then you will need an extra comparator. So you can take a look if you want. The world download uses version 120.4 with the experimental features enabled for version 121. Now there's one thing, I didn't have time to test this filter extensively on my survival server, even though we do run the 120.4 version with the experimental data pack. And I'm not sure if it's fully unload proof. The problem is that if it somehow happens that the copper bulb gets into the wrong state, then this filter would run dry. All of the items would run through. The only thing you can do is change this manually. I don't really see how this could happen at least if you build it within a chunk. So if you visit chunk builder, this is something that you really shouldn't do. Have a chunk border right in the middle of the filter. So you should try to build one slice in a chunk because it could happen that for example, this chunk is loaded, this chunk is unloaded, and this might lead to problems. Copper Bob is new, we have limited experience. And if anything pops up, I will let you know in the comments. But I believe this should be pretty robust. And I think it's a nice alternative to the normal impulse filter because it's silent, unlike the alternatives that we had before. I'm very much looking forward to using this filter. Now this is the old design of my autocrafter storage, where all of the ingredients in the lower row are filled by autocrafters. And this is another case where I needed to fit some additional redstone below the filters. And for this application, I use this design. My new filter has pretty much the same space requirements at the same layout. And I'm currently working on a new version of that that will use the new filters instead because they're cheaper and they're silent. And of course, it's always interesting to try out a new concept in survival. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you want to see more content like this. Leave a comment if you have any questions or remarks. And see you next time. Bye bye.